Good morning everyone. Today is Monday morning and as time goes on as our society gets more and more perilous um, the Bible says that they're going to be worse and scorners. I've noticed it increasing dramatically. There are those there that absolutely hate the Bible. They hate what it teaches. They hate anyone who teaches or attempts to teach the Bible. There are a lot of people out there that are very aloof and think they know everything about the Bible. And then you have the woke crowd on the other side attacking all Christians. We're living in perilous times. In Matthew 24 says many will be offended even those of your own household come against you you know so if you're being attacked if you're being mocked if you're being scorned if you're being maligned Paul says count it all joy you know count it all joy it would be easy to stop proclaiming the truth of the gospel if we listen to all the mockers and scorners out there, wouldn't it? It would be easy to dis get discouraged, but we're told not to put any confidence in men. Our confidence is in Christ and Him alone and His completed work on the cross. He shed His precious blood on the cruel and rugged cross of Calvary for His people. He predestinated them unto adoption and he works all things after the counsel of his own will not after the will of man it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but God that showeth mercy I'm glad for that so when others are mocking and scorning you just, re just remember that they mocked and scorned Christ too you know a number of years ago I was being mocked and scorned quite a bit I still am mocked and scorned quite a bit but um, I wrote this little poem and this is uh, for anyone who wants to mock and scorn a Christian they need to listen to this poem Others may mock and scorn my confession, but Christ is my eternal possession. Purchased by his blood dying on the cross, bearing all my sins, what a tremendous cost. So go ahead and mock and scorn if you want to, they mocked and scorned my Savior too. His perfect sacrifice has paid the ransom for me, and this will be my only final plea. He will say, come home my child, I did this for you, and all my tears will be wiped away in the New Jerusalem and all scorning and mocking will then be through. I'm looking forward to that day and we no longer have to contend with the mockers and scorners in our world. Well, have you ever noticed how the ones that are mocking and scorning the most are the ones who um, who are the most unhappy, ungrateful, blasphemous people you'll ever meet. Kenneth Allen Weimer, good to see you this morning. Amen to the whole work of salvation and God's eternal purpose and election of grace accomplishing fully and completely at the cross. I agree wholeheartedly. You know, Christ's work is done. He, he said it was finished on the cross. And he was slain from the foundation of the world. You know, looking back in history, we see events unfold, and the greatest story in history is the greatest story ever told. It's not just a novel. No, the story is true. How God sent his son to die to redeem his chosen few. 
Praise and thanksgiving we give to the Son who in the course of heaven with the three in one made provision for this sinner through his blood the work is done. The plan was determined between the Godhead you see and this great story in history would be a certainty. God would redeem his people a ransom he would pay. Christ would be slain on Calvary in history on that day. You see, Scripture tells us that he was slain in eternity before the world began. It was predetermined. Yes, it was his master plan. When I think of God's love and what he did for me by dying on the cross unconditionally, I'm sometimes overwhelmed in my mind and in my soul why this precious Savior would even care. To give himself on Calvary for my life to spare. He could have gone about doing other things like watching his angels or listening to them sing. But to come to this sin-cursed world and die for me is the greatest expression of love that I will ever see. How can I thank you, Lord, for being oh so kind to realize that before creation you had this worm in mind? To come and shed your blood and endure such scorn and pain should cause me to give you praise and an eternal refrain. Help me demonstrate in some real way this grace and love to others is my prayer today so many times I forget what an awesome thing you did for me when you died and rose again to set my soul at liberty thank you well I hope you have a good week this week and when you hear people scorning and mocking and shaking their fist at those who are trying to proclaim the truth of God just realize that you're in good hands. Underneath us are the everlasting arms of God. God bless.